Kaching has one of the greatest zero to hero stories in all of Genshin. She went from being a character that was borderline unplayable and useless in hard content to actually having really good teams with Dendro and being competitive with quite a number of limited five stars. And believe it or not, her teams are actually getting a pretty sizable buff with Fontaine and the 4.0 release for a lot of players. So if you've ever thought about building up your favorite fake cat girl, now could be the perfect time. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Kaching is an Electro on-field DPS who functions more like an on-field driver and Electro applicator due to her interactions with Dendro. She is essentially defined by two things. One, doing small Electro hits that are each amplified by the Quicken reaction. And two, each hit proccing Fischl's A4 passive and having incredible synergy with her, allowing her to do the same reaction. Kaching is essentially the second best character for this role behind Yaimiko, but the difference isn't that massive because Fischl herself does such a ridiculous portion of the team's damage, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first talk about her pros and cons. Kaching has amazing elemental application. Not only do her normal and charge attacks apply her element, but her skill does as well, and her burst applies her element a lot of times. Each time you apply Electro with Kaching, which is not on every single hit, but a lot of them, because of the way they act independently from each other, a lot of them will proc Electro, and for every time you do that, you are proccing Fischl's A4. And whenever you proc Fischl's A4, you also get a quick and aggravate reaction, which means that both Fischl and Kaching are getting tons of aggravate reactions, getting a lot of value, and aggravate, as you know, benefits many small hits more than it does one large hit. So that's why Kaching is arguably a better option for this than Raiden, even though Raiden has a lot more in terms of raw damage multipliers. Kaching also has really, really good synergy with the whole aggravate team, meaning she has amazing synergy with characters like Sucrose as well as Kazuha. Both Sucrose's elemental mastery sharing passive as well as Kazuha's elemental damage bonus passive do a lot to improve the reactions of the whole team. The quick swap playstyle she has allows you to more easily, at least in my experience, run this character without a healer. We'll talk more about her teams later, and that can allow you to bump up the team damage ceiling quite a bit. She's essentially a free character for a lot of people because when you lose your 50-50, a lot of people will eventually get Kaching. If you're trying to get Kaching and you get unlucky and you go forever without getting here, I can definitely feel a lot of sympathy for that. I still don't have Mona despite having C4 gene. So I understand the pain if you've been trying to get a copy of Kaching and you haven't been able to yet. But for a lot of us, she will be essentially a free character and that makes her really, really valuable. That means that if you're trying to make an aggravate team, you can have one of the premier options pretty much for absolutely free, which is kind of huge. She has really, really fantastic AoE performance, and she doesn't absolutely require Nahida. Her non-Nahida teams are not all that much worse than with her. Her biggest cons, I would say, is although she doesn't need Nahida, it is her best team, and running Nahida with her does mean you have to forego a defensive option. You will talk about the best way to mitigate that though later. There is one option that's not that far behind. The biggest downside I would say that she has is that she herself doesn't contribute that massively to the team. It is important to have some character be an on-field electro driver if you're doing an aggravate team, whether that would be Kaching, Raiden, Yaimiko, even Lisa, and we'll talk about how she stacks up versus those options later on. But you could take her out of the team and put someone else in and it's not going to be that big of a difference. That being said, in AoE, she is a really, really excellent official driver. And because of her burst's really large AoE, she does do good AoE damage. The con, however, is that her single target performance, at least to me, feels a little bit lackluster. Future Jello here, I was testing her a lot in single target. As you can see from this Megu Kenki fight, her single target is actually really good, especially the more you invest into your Fischl. So if you want better single target performance for your Kaching, Fischl is the key. Final con is she really only has one good team and it's this aggravate team. But speaking of her teams, let's talk about them. If you look up certain guides online, you'll find that some of them recommend physical Kaching. Physical Kaching is really, really bad. Don't do that. 
She has no synergy with physical. The only thing she does is apply electro. And if you use her skill a certain way, she doesn't infuse her normal attack and charge attack with electro. You can try physical kitching for the overworld, but it's annoying to play. It's less fun and it's really, really bad. Stay away. Cryo Kaching is funny, but not very good. There's a lot better things you could be doing and pretty much any other character could go here, but it is funny. So if you want to do it, go ahead. Double Hydro Kaching was my favorite form of Kaching before Dendro, and that goes to show how bad she was before Dendro. She essentially needed to get hard carried by by double hydro i used to run Cosmo in this last slot nowadays you can do like a double hydro hyper bloom and it does do well she does proc hyper blooms you'd really want to make sure you have an elemental mastery sans for this maybe even an all mastery weapon and then she does use nahida's burst the downside is of course she has no off field electro application so when she's off field you're not procking hyper blooms and generally it's sort of like a cope sino team or a cope Hyperbloom team. Generally, this is just going to be better off being a Kuki or a Raiden, but it is something you can do if you want maybe her highest single target team damage. Kaching Hyper is something that was played before the release of Dendro. It is her highest personal damage team and scales honestly pretty badly, even with vertical investment for Kaching. Although Kaching has decent synergy with Kujo Sara, being able to unload a lot of burst damage with the buff, Kaching's scalings herself just are not that great. So you generally don't want to play something like this. If you do um, make your Kujo Sara, you want to have her be C6. Otherwise, this team really will not function. But you're generally better off not worrying about this sort of team and replacing Bennett with pretty much any Dendro unit. And now we get to her actual good team, which is Aggravate. This is going to be, in my opinion, the best version of a Kaching Aggravate team. You can absolutely run Sucrose instead of Causeway here, but there's a couple of reasons that I really don't like it very much. Number one, when I play this team, I can get away without a healer. The iframes you get from Kaching's burst, Causeway's burst, and skill, being able to jump up of some of Tax, if you're familiar with the patterns, and having really low field time characters like Nahida and Fischl, with cheap burst energy costs from Nahida, Kaching, and even Kazwa, you can spam their bursts fairly often to dodge attacks, and this can allow you to not play without a healer and get a real ton of damage out of this team. You do want to make sure you're getting your Electro Swirls and Electro Infusions with your Kazwa. Could be a good idea to swirl before switching into Nahida so you don't get too much Dendro on the enemy. And you do have the option of running Prototype Amber on Nahida. I haven't tried it myself, but it's going to give you about 20... I think it's 24% healing per burst from Nahida to each of your team members. So it can be a reasonable option, but you're going to be losing on damage or buffing or something like that. I really like Kazuha as well over Sucrose because of the, the more powerful suction and getting everyone grouped up can be really good for hitting Kaching's burst on everyone multiple times. She does a lot in AoE. She's really underrated for how much she hits her burst on each enemy in AoE, and it does a really crap ton of damage. In addition, Kazuo also does a lot of personal damage, but if you do have Sucro C6, I think they about equalize on this team in terms of overall team damage potential. Now, you can also run a more comfy version of this team using someone like Baiju. The actual highest damage version is running Kirara, and you run her on the instructor Instructor's artifact set and on the sapwood blade and you have either your official or kaching pick up the leaf that that's created and this way you get sort of a hybrid of defensive option while still getting quite a bit of buffing from the instructor and from the sapwood you get a really high value for instructor on this team plus she's a lot cuter than nahida or baiju in addition to being the highest damage you can run yao yao on instructor and you can run baiju on instructor but because kirara can hold the sapwood blade it actually ends up being the best and also i prefer her shielding to yao yao's healing personally but Yao Yao works really, really excellent as well. And I think that the pull arm creates a leaf as well, if I'm not mistaken. So you actually get pretty close on the buffing. So yeah, you can definitely run Yao Yao instead. If you don't run the healers, you can absolutely run Kale on this slot. If you have Elegy for the end, Kale is a really, really excellent team, team buffing option for this team as well. You're not going to get any form of defensive utility, and Kale can be quite tricky to use due to her animations being kind of funky, but Kale is really, really cute and a really decent option for this slot. You can also run the Dendro Traveler. I find it really nice and consistent, and I ran it before we had any other dendro options and i really really liked it i would recommend if you need to run a defensive option i would recommend it to be the dendro unit because although you can put nahida back in and switch out kazua for example for sayu or for jean you really lose a ton of damage and a ton of grouping because jean can't proc aggravates so it ends up being much worse on the damage front as well as the quality of life front you can also trade out fischl for a different electro so you can run kuki instead here you can put her on instructors but it's generally just it's generally so 
inefficient because Fischl is so good in the aggravate teams. And you can run Kujo Sara on this team. Kujo Sara is going to be better the more whaled out your Kaching is. If you have like an R5 Mist Splitter or something and max crown talents and everything like that, and you've just got absolutely cracked out artifacts, this could be a good option. But I think in general, you're going to see much better results from Fischl. Now that we've talked about her teams, let's talk about how to build her. Everyone knows about the Sumeru buffs, but she's actually getting two buffs as well in Fontaine. Because Fischl is getting a brand new artifact set that is going to be a pretty massive upgrade for her. And Fischl does something like 50% of Kaching's team-wide damage and aggravate. A bump of 20% or 15-20% to 20 plus of, pers of damage from Fischl is going to increase the team damage by a lot. So I highly recommend if you're a Kaching main to farm that set for Fischl so your team can really shine. The second buff Kaching is getting is the new Battle Pass weapon is extremely good for her. I'll be making a video on the new Battle Pass weapons very soon. It's so much better than the Black Sword for her. It's kind of ridiculous. She already has a really good free-to-play option with an R5 Lion's Roar being already 8% better than the Black Sword. And if my preliminary speculation is correct, I do think that the Battle Pass weapon at even R R1 will be slightly better than the Lion's Roar. Future Jello again, I was wrong. The Lion's Roar is still better than the R1 Battle Pass. If you do get R5 Battle Pass, it does surpass the Lion's Roar and does get close to the five star options. But Lion's Roar is so, so good at a baseline that if you have a Lion's Roar at R5, getting a five star weapon is barely necessary because the damage really is that close. In fact, because Fischl is such a high portion of the team's damage, it actually would be much more beneficial Huh? to get her a five-star weapon instead. For Kaching's build, she is going to be a character that you are going to want to take to level 90. Aggravate scales quite heavily off of level 90, so it's actually very important you get her there. Her talents aren't quite as critical as her level and her crit stats because the talents don't scale with the aggravate reaction. I'm personally leaving mine at level 88 for now. I probably will take them to nine eventually, but just know that they're on a lower priority level than getting good artifacts and getting your level to 90. For weapons, you should take note of the order of these weapons more than you should about the tiers because each one sort of goes down a couple percent, at least from the calculations that I've seen. The brand new battle pass weapon, we'll just pretend it's this one, which none of you should get is most likely going to land somewhere around here, probably here at R1 and probably up here at R5. But as more math is being done, we'll have a better, more accurate idea. But rest assured, if you don't have like an R5 Lion's Roar or something like that, that or or a five star weapon for it's going to be really, really excellent. As you can see, pretty much any of the five star weapons are going to be great. If you're using the Summit Shaper, you want to make sure that you have a shield. The Lion's Roar is basically tailor made for her. It's really, really, really great on her. It only falls 10% behind a Mist Splitter or a Jade Cutter, which are pretty much equal. They're only like a percentage point off. And then the Huron and Light of Foliar Incision are really close too. If you happen to have them when pulling for another character, and of course, Freedom Soren is really, really good too. Pretty much she has great synergy with most of the good swords in the game. And if you were around for this event, you can use this weapon. It's actually really not that far behind the other one. It's only a 3% or so behind the Lion's Roar. And I will also point out that even, even if it, you have a 10% increase in damage from, you know, the Summit Shaper or from the Lion's Roar to the Mist Splitter, a good chunk of the team's damage is still being done by Fischl. So the overall increase for your team is probably, if it's a 10% boost, it's probably only a 4% boost for, for your total team damage. So it's really not that massive. And you almost definitely have a good option. If you don't have any of the options, then Iron Sting is a reliable free to play option. If you're completely free to play, at least she has something solid that you can guarantee. It's about 16% behind the Mist Splitter and about 7% behind Lion's Roar. For artifact sets, Thundering Fury is basically her signature set. Anytime you trigger a Quicken or Aggravate Reaction, you get to lower her skill cooldown, which means she can spam her skill more, which means she can get even more Aggravates and Quickens. It's kind of what her whole kit is based on. So it's highly recommended to get a four piece of this set, but it is part of the strong box, so you can go crazy with it. And I would say it's very important to get a full set for this one. Although you can run two piece, two piece or four piece Thunder Soother or something like that. This set is just so good because not only is it increasing her damage, but you're also proccing Fischl's A4 more often, which is 
really the most important part, so I highly recommend going for this set. For main stats, you're going to want to do Elemental Mastery or Attack Sands, whichever is better. In terms of substats for you, they end up coming out pretty close. I think Elemental Mastery in my testing is slightly, slightly better, but it's not that crazy amount. If you have like two, three substats better for attack, then you can definitely go for attack instead. You want to go electro damage bonus on your goblet and cr and crit damage most likely crit damage circlet especially if you are running that new battle pass weapon because you have to remember that kaching gets crit rate from her passive so every time she uses her burst she actually increases her own crit rate by 15 percent and you can pretty reliably always get that crit rate so you want to make sure you don't go higher than 86 percent crit rate the 85 percent crit rate you want to stop right around there so i'm actually over capping i have one completely wasted slot of crit rate Whenever you're getting rolls for artifacts, crit is the number one thing that you're looking for, with elemental mastery being a close second and attack being third. All of those stats are good for her in that order. You don't really need any ER at all, and you don't want any other rolls. So pretty much it's crit, elemental mastery, and attack. Any one of them is a win, with crit being the most important because you want to build up that crit ratio. For constellations being a launch standard banner 5 star, they're not all that great and impactful constellations. Fortunately, they did actually fix her c1 which was bugged for a long time well actually i think it was her c2 that was bugged before and they fixed that for the elemental particle particle it's not that huge for her but it's at least nice that they thought about her enough to fix it her other constellations they just don't increase her that much like the talent levels are nice but they're not that big increasing her attack is all right like you know we'll take 25 percent attack but it's not that huge so they're nice to get but they're not like they're not necessary you're not unlocking big portions of damage by the constellation at least you do get some electro damage bonus from c6 but like who's getting a c6 standard banner five star she is she is fully complete at c0 and it's a good thing too because you couldn't wish for constellations if you tried speaking of constellations for vertical investment the best thing you could do for your kaching is actually not get her weapon it's actually getting her nahida c2 if you have nahida c2 i'd be surprised if you couldn't run her without a healer because nahida c2 plus kaching and fischl plus kazua are going to absolutely decimate everything in their path that's going to be a really really strong team i won't be getting it because i build and test every character at c0 and and kitching is more than enough without any constellations for your other characters the second best thing you could do for your kitching is get her a five star weapon but actually no it's not it's actually getting fischl a five star weapon and then it's getting kitching a five star weapon because fischl does give more to the team damage than kitching does but you know I love Kaching. I'm kind of a Kaching simp, so I have her on the Jade Cutter. But it's only, you know, 9% better than the Lion's Roar. And a lot of my testing has always been with the Black Sword. So rest assured that as long as you have a decent weapon for her, she is going to perform well. Really, the team will perform better the better your Fischl is invested. So do not neglect your Fischl, and you will feel great with this team. Let's talk about her versus Yaimiko versus Sino and versus Lisa. So Sino is the easiest one. They don't actually share the same role. You're generally not using Sino to drive Fischl in an aggravate team. You're using Sino on a Hyper Bloom team. And so they're really not the same role at all. Sino is almost always going to be better in single target with his best teams. And Kaching, in my experience, has been better in AoE in her best teams because you don't have the grouping with Sino very well. His long field time much better lends himself to, be, to boss fights and things like that. Versus Yaimiko, Kaching is definitely behind, but you also have to consider that you do have to spend wishes to get yourself a Yaimiko. And because Fischl still contributes the majority of the team's damage, even in a Yaimiko team, the disparity is not that great. It's also easier to get away without playing a healer with Kaching. And if you want to be totally fair and maybe spend an equal amount of Primo Gems on Yaimiko and on Kaching, you, you could argue to compare Kaching with a 5-star weapon versus Yaimiko with a 4-star weapon. And practicality speaking, you might want to compare Yaimiko with maybe a Baiju Fischl Kazuo team, whereas you can get away with a Kaching Nahida team. After some pretty substantial testing, I feel pretty confident in saying that Yaimiko does feel substantially better than Kaching, and she sheets it too. Even with someone like Baiju as a defensive option when Kaching is running Nahida, the gap is still pretty noticeable between Kaching and Yaimiko. However, if we are to consider equal Primo Gem investment, you could consider giving Fischl a 5-star bow instead of Kaching. And if you compare Yaimiko with all 4-star weapons because you had to spend wishes to get Yaimiko, and Kaching with a 4-star sword but Fischl with a 5-star bow and using Nahida, the gap actually gets really, really close. So you could make the argument that both of them 
should fall on the same tier if you're considering primo gem investment and smart primo gem investment plus getting a five star bow for your official is more of a universal choice you're going to be able to use that bow in more places than getting yourself a yaimiko so if we're looking at just account strength for an aggravate team i would tend to recommend someone get using kaching getting fischl a five star bow rather than wishing for yaimiko for an aggravate team so that's kind of where i would recommend for value and i think it's pretty cool that a essentially free unit can compete that close with a limited five star that way but if we are going to compare apples to apples if they're both at free st at four star investment yaimiko is using the widseth kaching using lion's roar yaimiko does feel like the better unit and it's not it's not close it's very noticeable lisa is actually a really good option for this team too if you just don't want to build kaching but you still want to have an aggravate team Lisa is a really great option. She can drive official really, really well. It is really hard to get her constellation, so I do recommend saving your star glitter for Lisa constellations if you do want to build her. And in general, she will be a downgrade to Kaching, especially since again you're gonna have a hard time getting away without a healer. Healer while playing lisa but lisa is still going to be more than sufficient for clearing aoe content with this type of team but essentially as they're both three characters to people who lose their 50 50 to kaching you pretty much always are going to go for kaching in that situation For future prospects, well, we know that Kaching again, is getting that buff to Fischl as well as to herself if you're a Battle Pass enjoyer. So that's really, really exciting. Beyond that, I think her teams are pretty fleshed out. I don't see us getting new Dendro units for a while. I don't see us getting new animal units to replace her. I th think her teams are where they are. And I think overall where they land is fine. Great in AoE, decent, but not amazing in single target. For overworld and aesthetic, she's a great character to use in the overworld with her lightning stiletto. I really, really enjoy it. Exploration with her is a blast. And her aesthetic is one of my favorites in the game. I love this character and I love both of her regular skin and her premium skin. They are both really, really beautiful in my opinion. Her animations are great. She's really fun to play. I enjoy playing her. I enjoy the quick swap spamming that she has and that you can get away without a healer. It's really, really fun, very exhilarating. And I think that she's a really, really great character. You can build her up for exploration in the beginning and transition her into an end game character. And one of the, and one of the other pros that I didn't really mention is that she frees up Sing Cho on the other side. She gives you an AOE team that's not a national team. So that if you don't have another Hydro unit, this is an AOE team that doesn't need a Hydro unit, which is really, really nice. That means that if you don't have one, that's really, really valuable. It frees up your Sing Cho and your Bennett for the other side. So you can run either a Hyper Bloom or a national team on the other side. If you've been enjoying the content, please, please consider subscribing. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. We've gone full time. It would really, really mean a lot to me if you do enjoy the content to subscribe. You can also check out my Patreon to support me and my family as we have gone full time. And you can join our Discord for a great community of Genshin awesome people. And if you don't want to do any of those things, that is totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much and bye for now.